Okay. It is 1034, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started, if that's all right. And I um, want you to bear with me as, uh, as I'm going to be switching between two screen shares. Um, I have also put a document into, um, into the drive, and I will send you a link to the drive because I'm sure that might be helpful. This is under the agent toolkit drive. Um, if you're not familiar with where or what that is all about, uh, I will send a follow-up email and show you where that is. But in the education drive under agent toolkit, there's a place called class documents and handouts. And I am going to share with you a link right now that's in the chat. So you can click on that and you will go into that drive. And then in class documents, you'll see one called Nailing the Final Steps. And I will share that with you when we get to that stage. How about that? Everybody good? Thumbs up? Sweet. Okay. Let me do some share screen here and um, we'll go from there. All right, so um, today we're gonna go over nailing the final steps or as I'm calling it. And ideally what, what I'm, uh, the goal here is to make sure all the work that you've done that you get to the closing table with success. And my experience is, is that that tends to be a time when uh, the wheels can really fall off the bus for all the work that you've put in thus far. And so one of the, 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 the hopes and goals here is that, is that we can get, we can make this really smooth for your people. And ultimately they have a great experience and then you get referrals from this process. So the, uh, can you see my, my presentation there? Okay, I'm sure you can. Come on. I'm not using presentation form. I suppose I should. Oh boy. Don't make me do it. There's my little thing in the bottom. Here we go. Doing it. All right. How exciting. All right. You can see that full screen now. Thumbs up. 10 4. Great. So, the final steps things we're going to cover today is the week prior to close, the steps to prep for closing, uh, what to do at final walkthroughs and see that be a kind of a problem, and then what to do at the closing table. So, table skills, gifts, thanks, all those things. I apologize, I seem to be, um, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so the week prior to close, this I find to be really, really critical in that you be in close communication with your clients. Anxiety starts to get high, um, you know, they've already negotiated repairs if they're on the buyer side or seller. And if there's repairs to be made, this is also a critical stage to make sure that we're covering. So um, the other thing is the money, no closing, no, with no money. So all of this is for naught if we don't have money. So if there was money being transferred between parents to people or loans given or um, make sure they know not to buy any expensive things, you wanna put that in your email to them at the beginning, no new purchases. Oh, but we needed a refrigerator and washer dryer and they offered 0% at Lowe's. Uh, no, you didn't open up new lines of credit prior to a closing. You've given them those heads up when they went under contract, okay? So other thing is the money, like I said, check in with the lender, no matter if you're the buyer's agent or the listing agent, you need to be calling the lender and you need to find, are we clear to close? Those are, those are very proper terms that are used in the lending industry is clear to close. Clear to close means all but the money has been sent. The check is, is ready to go. It's, uh, it's, they're, they're gonna send the money, okay? And that typically comes three to five days prior to closing. Anything less than three days, you are going to be in a problem and likely not closing because it is now federal law that they have a closing disclosure three days prior to close that outlines all the expenses and details that are gonna happen at that closing with the amount of money they need to bring to close. Funds necessary to close. Do not assume that the lender is being a great communicator with your client. Many times they're not, even though they may be a great lender. So money and um, final steps. 
I am not as worried about their move, um, but I am, I'm, from a customer service or a client perspective, I'm trying to make sure that we, I give them all the tools, tips, and I can be the source of the source for information to make this process go smoothly, but I've got to make sure I handle the big rocks first, and that is, do we have money, and is this house ready? That, that's, my, that's my job, and to let them know what the steps are going to be. So those are, my, those are my most important tasks. Then last minute prep for the clients, movers, organizers, junk removal, other things that, um, other things that you, anything that you prep or tell clients as far as that week prior to closing, uh, could be giving them information on, I have, I'm gonna share with you some samples here on uh, changing your mail and uh, you know, voter registration and lining up the, um, the lawn care. I suggest asking a list from the sellers of who do they use that they love. I don't care if it's the babysitter, the dog walker, the, the you know, who's the best baker in town, in their neighborhood, whatever. They don't live there, and this person doesn't need to figure it out the hard way. That sellers live there. They know who they've used to fix their sprinklers and who they used as a painter. You know, create a template and send it to your listing agent. Um, and say, my sellers, my buyers are um, excited to move into this neighborhood and would love if your sellers could take five minutes and share their, their best people. Anything else that you share for that or ideas? They're like, no, Ted, we just know you're going to talk fast and share too much, so keep going. Okay, good talk. Final emails, what to bring to closing. Um, uh, we'll go, I'm going to show you samples of those. Arranging keys, garage remotes, fobs, pool keys, what items are to be left. Do not assume anybody knows what they're doing or like how to do it, okay? And the day of closing is the worst time to figure that out and to try to be coordinating that. And agents are notorious for this. Notorious. Emails, the week of close. Let's go to my sample, shall we? For those playing at home, let's go to the drive. Done. Let's share the, let's share the, um, let's share the goodies. Hold on. Oh, please. Going full screen. Zoom problems. Now, when you get, when you get multiple screens going on and you're trying to, where's my chat? There it is. Okie dokie. All right, there is the link to the drive. I'm going to show you the drive here. So what I did is I created a document in here for you called samples. And in here is 18 years of pain that I'm giving you for village free of charge. Okay. <clears throat> so first thing is in samples here, I'm going to come back to final walkthroughs. Um, if you're representing a buyer, you can't see my screen, can you? No, you're just gonna you're just gonna let me roll like that. You aren't gonna say nothing. I see how you are. Let's stop this. We're a team here, folks. We everybody, everybody got a, got a party together. Let's get the desktop. Oh well, I'm gonna I might have to switch you back and forth, but this is ultimately what you want to see. Okay, closing template emails. So. This is let's get ready to close. And you have all this. This is all in the village drive for you. 10 days prior to close. This is what we're going to, when we're sending it, who it goes to, what's the subject, and what are my attachments. I'm just going to give you the highlights of the things that I cover. Okay. So this is just reminding this goes to a buyer and the buyer's agent. All right. So if you're the buyer's agent, you can see yourself. Reminds them here's the close date. Um, it's scheduled for this, but we need a time. If any party signs after two, there's a high chance it won't fund. What does that mean? Here's the utilities. Time to set those up. Um, talks about money. You're not going to get keys till we have money and that transfers. Quick links of utility companies. If you need homeowner's insurance, they should have already had that by now per contract, but here's a recommended source. Put your people in there. Trash service, post office, change of address, driver's license. Here's my key vendors. These are the people that I know where they sleep and I know they'll take good care of my people. So these are the ones that I say, I have a bigger vendor list, but these are the core people of like what I find are my rider dies. Questions, comments? 
I can see your amazement. I love it. All right. Then uh, one week prior to close, this one again is for buyers. It's going to say, I hope you're looking forward. Now we've set a time because they, they gave us a time and we'll be expecting to see the closing disclosure within three days. <clears throat> As a reminder, here's the following are not to, are to remain and not to remain in the home. Don't forget to schedule utilities to be turned on the same day, where you're going to close, what you need to bring and not bring to closing. Then you're going to get a closing disclosure. The closing disclosure comes in and I have an email for that. I work that if I do something twice, it becomes a system. And you can make these uh, templates in Gmail to where you literally just click the button and up drops the template. Okay. Uh, so closing disclosure, here's a copy of your closing disclosure for review. Here's what you need to be looking for Do from the borrower. It's over a grand. They can't take a personal check. Keys, 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 keys. We've asked typically that all keys be left in the home. And then I take the last key out at, at final walkthrough. Okay. That's a conversation with the other agent on the other side. Make sure you do that in advance, not the day of closing or the day before, but you're just advising that buyer how to handle that. Questions? When you said that you have the, the templates, the Gmail templates, is that yes. through, is that through um, Google Drive? It is not. It's just through a format of Gmail. And I will have Rebecca do a tech lab if she'd be so willing. Um, if maybe we'll make that as uh, C2EX is pretty full for next Thursday, but um, as far as content, but maybe we'll put it as a bonus if you stick around for C2X. C2VX, you're gonna get a, a Gmail email templates. Yes, Rebecca. If there's two minutes at the end, I can just do a quick demo and then I'll, I'll work up a class on Gmail. Love it, okay, we'll do that. Cause it's pretty awesome. It's a game changer, right, Rebecca? Yes. Every template she sends to her customers and clients for us, and for herself, she has it now. We now have it in this Gmail uh, template section. It's so cool. All right, so that's working with the buyer and getting them ready to close as far as that checklist, okay? Um, steps to prep for close. So you're gonna wanna prep for uh, scheduling a final walkthrough. And you're gonna wanna prep the client on what to expect. I recommend having a checklist to keep the client on track and explaining to them what the action steps are. Now, I typically do uh, what's called a two-stage walkthrough, okay? And the two-stage walk, scroll back up here. The first step is to do, um, is to check repairs, okay? So this, is, this final walkthrough is the final final. So the first is to check repairs. I typically do this uh, two to three days before closing. Whatever you put in your contract, is when you'd want to accomplish that. So they say that repairs are due to make be made four days prior to closing. Well, then four days prior to closing, I'm going to be doing my final walk, okay, or my repair walk, we'll call it that. I also ask when, at, when requesting repairs that a seller complete that I get photos and receipts. I don't want to be crawling in no crawl space, and I don't want my buyer to have to hire their inspector to come back to look at it even though that's the best practice. Everybody follow? Hire the, hire the inspector to come back and check the stuff is the best practice. The second was, would be, yes. Sorry, I was just about to ask you if you recommend doing that. That's what I usually have for clients, but sometimes they're really expensive. And so to get around that, I like the idea of photos. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, the part of theory will be played by Vanessa Cole today. So if you see her name. Oh, that's sorry about that. He, he does school. Mary's <laughs> her amazing son. Does it typically cost the same amount as an inspection to have them come back out? It doesn't. That's a great question. It varies. I typically see it between like 150 to 250. Okay. But money can start to get tight for buyers. And the inspectors are so busy that getting them to come out is it can be difficult. And to me, it's accomplishable with photos and receipts. Okay. And so I request that I put that in my, my um, repair proposal and repair amendment. Sometimes I use an exhibit if it's too long. And that's, again, standardized language in a Word document that I save. 
I just call it my repair exhibit. All right, so that is the repair walkthrough, okay? We're gonna do a lot of the similar things that we're gonna do with the final walk for mechanicals. And you'll see, this is my checklist for them. Let's see, when you do a final walkthrough, a final walk, making to do a final tour of your new home. When they're checked, make sure the items, the terms of your contract have been met. So we're looking to make sure, is that refrigerator still there? Because at the final walk, um, this is the hour before closing. I never do a final walk the day before unless some bananas excuse exists. Why do I do this the hour before closing? So in case something's wrong, you cannot close? Yep. Yeah, and why not the day before? A lot can happen between yeah. <laughs> the day before and the hour before closing. I ran and, and hopefully everything's out of the house by an hour prior to, so you can see if there's a hole behind a hutch that didn't get moved out or something like that. Yes. All, all accurate reasons, absolutely. The biggest for me, and that I explained to them is, I wanna make sure you flush that toilet one last time before you buy it. Because water is the nemesis of all home ownership. Any question? Yeah. Um. So I had my uh, repair proposal two days before closing. I just did it yesterday. We walked through, but then I told him we're just gonna pop back over um, before closing tomorrow just to make sure. And the seller, I mean, he didn't care, but he thought that was a little weird. And I was just like, well, if something wasn't fixed, I want to have a little bit of time before closing. So is that Am I un misunderstanding like what the faith, like what the proper way is to do it? You're not misunderstanding it. I think there's, and I'm trying to mute these uh, things. Now I think that should work. Um, no, it's, you know, a lot of it is like everything in life. It's the way we sell it. So, you know, what I would say is uh, we just want to make sure one last chance to remove liability from you that everything is working mechanically primarily plumbing, because something could happen unbeknownst to the seller as well. So we just want to make sure, um, and so you'll see in here, part of my list is basically what we do is we flush all toilets, I run the dishwasher, I just run a quick cycle and I'll turn it to drain to make sure it's not leaking. Turn on all the ovens, the microwave. We are not there to check repairs. We already did that. We are not there to do do a new inspection. We are there simply to check the mechanicals, okay? I wanna make sure those keys are on the counter, the garage remotes are where they were to be left, you know, the light bulbs work, everything's in order, okay? Now that's the hour before. That should not be, the, I like to do the repair walk. Sometimes I'll do a three-stage, right? I might do, uh, if, if I get refer photos and receipts, I feel really good about that. Then I will do my final walk the day before. This is the most likely practice that I do, the most often. I'll do my final walk the day before. Then if I have problems, I'll be calling the agent and dealing with escrows such as, oh my gosh, there's a hole in the hardwood under the bed. We didn't know about it. Seller says, it was there when we bought it. Oh, well, that, that's lovely. That doesn't alleviate the the, concerned that we didn't know we were buying a hole under the bed. And now the negotiation starts. And dealing with that, um, although maybe another class, is just figuring out what's a reasonable uh, negotiation you can come to that both parties will agree to. And there will not be checks written. Okay, so can't write checks from the seller to the buyer. So the title company can help you work out how to handle that money exchange might be towards closing costs. It might be in a, a check left to a vendor of choice. Things like that. Okay. Everybody follow. If you have any questions, this is the time to go. Wait up. Okay. I think I can see everyone. Yes. All right. So that's what we're looking at then at final walk the hour before. We are simply making sure there is nothing leaking or on fire. All right. 
new construction. New construction is a little bit different. Okay, so when you're doing new construction, you've done a, a you have scheduled or you have requested in your offer and ensured that you're going to be doing a blue tape walk. You're going to be doing a two stage home inspection and a two stage client uh, walkthrough. The two stage home inspection, you're going to want to do a home inspection prior to drywall going in if you're buying at that stage because the inspector can't check things once the drywall's in such as plumbing fittings and things like that don't think that because something passed codes it really passed codes it just passed that guy that day okay and you know these are words that i use that are not to make people um upset or or frightened they're just realities right they're they're humans they're overworked and we're just bringing in additional opinions to help check. So we're gonna do a pre-drywall inspection if we're buying prior to pre-drywall, and then we're gonna do a general home inspection. Now the challenge is in new construction, getting the home done to get a home inspection, and they wanna close the hour the paint's drying, that's another, that's another class and issue. But you're gonna do a general home inspection when the home is substantially complete, I wouldn't wait for landscaping, although that's, a, you know, your appraisers will. And you will also be asking or in contract requesting <clears throat> a uh, blue tape walk. And a blue tape walk is primarily used for, you'll see it says here, paint touch-ups, cosmetic, okay? Bring your own blue tape, have it in every car. <clears throat> Excuse me, I also recommend having a plug tester. You'll look very official. And, um, and your phone and have your camera ready. And so, um, <clears throat> uh, you want to make sure it's complete and you're going to walk through that house. I make the client go first. I follow behind them with the blue tape. So they're the first eyes. If they miss things, I look great because I caught things. I don't want to be first and then behind me because then they're judging what am I catching and not. I prepare them that these are Homes that are built from materials from the earth, it's not a car from an assembly line. We stand arm lengths back, nobody's on their knees, and we will be look, looking for cosmetic defects. And ask the superintendent while you're doing it, is this reasonable? Could we fix this? And you want to befriend them. They are your gatekeeper to getting things done. Okay? Make sense? All right, you'll see new construction's a little bit different, um, and there's a little more steps to it. I still do... <clears throat> my uh, my final, or I call it my, maybe my mechanical walk. I haven't ever called it anything. My final, final, or what the hell? I need a name for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. To add to your list of blue tape and the plug, I always have a really high extender yeah. because I can't read. I'm, I'm five two, so I have that to put blue tape up above windows or things like that. Yes, you can use the end of a um, measuring tape and you make the, put the blue tape in a loop like you're going to hang a picture on the wall. You know, you put tape in a loop. You put the tape on the end of the measuring tape and you punch it to the ceiling right next to the, the thing. What do you use? Is it, what's your extender? Um, it's, it, it's really just a metal extender. It has a, a magnet on the end. I got it at Amazon. I use it to check uh, fire smoke detectors the smoke detectors and so it's perfect if you're short like I am. Love it. Smoke detector checks. These are things, I mean, these seem like really maybe silly to you, but they're, they're things they're never going to do and should be done. And so you just look handy. It's a nice little place where you can provide value. Thank you so much for sharing that, Vanessa. Uh, making sure the air filter is changed the day before closing on new construction. Very important. It gets dirty often. We prepare your buyers that they need to be changing it without fail for the first for the first month, every month, um, if not every two weeks for the first couple months. Okay. The buyer side closing templates. Uh, we went over those. I'm going to come back to the listing side. Okay. Let's see here, went over that. Any other questions about walkthroughs? Other questions about walkthroughs? Okay. Um, make sure I'm on my count, my, my uh, schedule here as far as my. Actually, Teddy, I have a quick question. Yeah. 
What if, um, in, a, in a few situations, um, if the buyer's not available like an hour or so before closing to do that final, oh. final walk, you did your final walk through two days before, you know, I, I had that happen where someone was literally flying in, like landing two hours before we closed and they weren't able to be oh. there. Um, do you do that on your own? I mean, I don't want to be the person doing that without them. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that because it's in my presentation when I click back there is don't do these things for them. Uh, they need to phone a friend. <laughs> now, have I closed for people? Yep. Have I signed for people? Yep. Have I forged check? Yep. No, I'm not forged checks. But I have done a few things that today aren't as allowed or encouraged as they were. They were all legal. Um, but it does add to a great state of liability. And the best thing to do is just, just have rules. Just have rules, right? Like, um, I don't ever use the blame it on my broker. And I don't use the words it's against the law. If it's not, it sounds so trite to me when agents or people say those things. But it's a liability policy, you know, it's a liability policy that, that I do not do that. Or you could say the words we. We give something all this more power who the hell is we? It doesn't matter. And they won't ask. You and the mouse in your pocket. We don't do final walkthroughs for clients. Um, if you'd like to skip it, we can. Um, I'll do a FaceTime with you. So I'll do a FaceTime. Good question. Other ideas or suggestions on that? I, I have a question around language and the contract, or just like typically if you're writing a um, Asking you to do a blue tape walkthrough, let's say on a standard tar form, let's say the builder doesn't really have a new construction, like doesn't have a builder contract and it's pretty yeah. straightforward. Is there yeah. a particular language you'll put, like let's say they just built, bought a lot and built two HPRs in terms of the timing of the blue tape walkthrough and when those are to be completed by as well. And then like what the buyer's rights are for the blue tape walkthrough. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no rights. No one has any rights to anything that's not agreed to in the contract. And so what I, what I would say is what's reasonable is that we have to do a blue tape walk far enough in advance that we give time for contractors to make necessary repairs, uh, specifically cosmetically. So I will typically do a blue tape walk depending upon the, the speed and process. I always arrange that with the, the builder or superintendent. It tends to be uh, a week to two weeks. Okay, gotcha. Is that helpful? Yeah, that's perfect. Because sometimes, like, some that's helpful to know, especially always having the builder there. Um, because, you know, in some new constructions, the builders, I mean, I've had experiences where the builder wants to, like, doesn't really care to be there and will blue tape everything and he'll come, come back to it and clean it up. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, and so I'm, what I'm hearing you say is always have best practice to have the builder there, right? Yes. Oh, 100%. I, and now, again, there's exceptions. I'm giving you best practices. Yes, you always want the builder there or superintendent, somebody that's making the decision or supervising that process. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, the worst is when they walk into a house and it's littered in blue tape. And then how do you know they really fixed all the blue tape? Take a video or take photos Put that on your client. You don't want to be responsible for checking every blue tape. You want to be careful the position you put yourself in. I mean, I could be really helpful. I've got, I can take photos of all the repairs and I could put them in Evernote and I could, but if I do it in Evernote, the beauty is I can send that to them and then they're responsible for checking those things. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. They're responsible for that. Appreciate it. Yeah. You bet. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay. Um, yeah, you'll see new construction. You see that? Don't do that for them. Uh, all right. Let's go back to, let me share, change my screen share. So I don't understand why it's not sharing my whole desktop uh, versus just uh, a window. Anybody has ideas on that? Until then, we'll just do it this way. All right. So on the listing side, so here you go. This is a receipt request. Hey, Amy, per the accepted, who's this go to? The listing agent, the listing agent assistant, or the contracted close company. 
and the buyer's agent. So I'm the buyer's agent in this instance, and this is if the seller's making repairs versus giving money towards closing costs. Per the accepted repair minute, please send all receipts and photos showing repairs completed blank. Don't assume they're gonna send the photos because they do about 1% of the time. You gotta get them, you gotta bend them. It's part of our, part of, becomes part of our job and value. Uh, final walk request, this is uh, it's letting them know about final walk. Please request the seller of all keys on the counter. I'll keep the key in the box. Again, I mean, just for a smooth closing, let's avoid something being moved that should have stayed. Appliances, drapes, TV mounts, per the contract. These are the items that are staying. Remembering the seller, remove all personal belongings, to bring in the crawl space, attic, home is clean, the yard is kept and maintained till the day of closing. Simple communication is really what we're being paid to help facilitate, right? Helpful? Tell us when our buyers are planning to close. Please tell us when you're planning to close. Thank you, help us get through the finish line. Um, on the listing closings, 10 days uh, prepare for closing. So this is just telling me your closing is nearing. This is for a seller. Uh, we recommend you complete your signing sometimes before noon. Allow time for cushion to be unforeseen items emerge. All good stuff in here, all for you to review in the agent toolkit. Uh, this is again for representing a seller. One week prior to close, here comes the finish line. When and where, what to bring, Mr. And Mrs. Seller. Bring our top 10 brochure case, like I've left you an acrylic in your house. <clears throat> if you really want to help them, have them help you, tell them to bring your sign. That's hilarious. Tell them to bring a great smile and a blue pen if you're sentimental, because you're going to sign loads of documents. You know, Rudy Title doesn't give fancy, fancy pens. Some people are sentimental. It's their time to break out that Mont Blanc that Granny gave them at graduation. This is their time. Tells them about receiving a settlement statement, when they'll get it, what to leave in the home. You know how much work it takes to get to the stage. You've been fabulous partners in this journey. Keep the faith. We're almost there. When did we send that? Oh, it's right here. One week prior to closing. So on your checklist, put it in your calendar. The contract to close people and know these things too, and you can share these with them. The Ulta is here. This is what to tell the seller what to look for and how that works. Questions? Additions, feedback? All right. Let's go back to my presentation. Can you see this okay? Is it, is it large enough? Well, what's going on with my voice today? Hold on a second. I quit smoking eight months ago. <clears throat> and um, I am, um, it's the thing I had the most shame about in my life, truthfully. I, I was disgusted that I picked that up when I was a big anti-smoker growing up in a smoking household. And uh, I've I've never felt better. I've never been fatter. Never felt better. Um, so we got to we got we got to click one and get the next. Okay, final walk. You can see the differences in new construction and resale. Let's talk about closing gifts. Uh, closing gifts. So that's something you're going to need to be prepared for. Uh, one of the things, and I will do a little zoom zoom here. Uh, we'll take calls during this. One of the things that I created was a closing gift menu. Now, I got tired of, well, one, I get tired of coming up with personalized closing gifts. Call me impersonal. Um, I'm trying to serve a lot of people at a high level and coming up with some cute closing gift. Um, first of all, there's a lot of people that believe closing gifts can <clears throat> devalue our business. Um, the gift is the work you did. So do a great job at that and ditch the BS closing gift or come up with something of value. I see you over there, D. Like it just becomes, it, it's like, are you going to wow them enough that it, they're going to like it, use it, or believe in it? Because there's a high chance you're going to miss, no matter what it is. They don't like things with monograms, or they do, or this is impersonal, or, oh, God, you can't eat out at a restaurant. So I got tired of that game. So I tried to formalize things. On new construction, I have what's called a new construction basket. It's a step stool upside down with a bunch of products in it in cellophane that the Sunshine, uh, Sunshine Shop does for like 60 to 80 bucks. I use that for new construction. 
and then I give them a little bit of swag, and we'll come back to that. But I move to this, and I love this, is I send them an email, and I give them the chance to pick what they want for closing. And I had arranged these things with vendors, three hours with my handyman, a movie, two hour consultation with my moving concierge, an hour consultation with my designer, a two hour consultation with my AV um, and home network integrator. You know, if they use it, wonderful. These people just got new clients. If they don't, it, the gift is the thought. It's not about them using the gift, just like an invitation to a party. They don't care if they come, they just wanna know they were invited. Okay? Um, mailing gifts, you know, I think that's kind of a nice way to, my mortgage lender, he sends a cutting board with their name on it and it has his stuff on the back. People seem to like it. Um, I have, I've, I feel like I've almost seen it all. I have, a, I have reams of information about closing gift ideas. Um, I like to have something that I bring to closing. Um, I bring them a bag. I bring a white little bag and it has uh, my sticker on it. So I have stickers with my brand on them, but don't get the sticker. If you're not, just buy black bags or something simple, classy. I have t-shirts with my logo on it. I made sure I got really, really, really soft t-shirts. People love them. I just got a photo from somebody yesterday, four years later, still my favorite t-shirt because I hate shitty t-shirts and I don't need another t-shirt, but a really nice V-neck super soft, yeah. So I, so I made sure that I did that. And then I have my boot koozies, right? They're, I should have brought them in, I'm sorry, but they're, uh, they're, they're koozies and they're in the shape of a boot and they have my branding on them and they said like buy, sell, dance or something silly. And then I have my hide a key. I have a rock, it looks kind of like a turd. And um, on the bottom is my logo and you can pull the plastic thing and in there is their key. That's kind of my silly present key presentation because I find key presentation is a place that we stink. My dad used to get keys minted in, you know, in gold. They're not minted, they just picked gold keys. He would get keys made. My problem is there's never enough time by the time I'm typically getting a key to getting copies made. And I think people should change their locks anyway. And that's another, another sin that sellers aren't, you're not doing with your sellers and terrorist buyers and telling them to change the locks. Um, and I put that all in a baggie and I, and I have a handwritten note, right? So I have note cards. It doesn't matter what it looks like, right? But it just have a note card with your name on it or something and you're going to write them a handwritten note. All that's in their little closing baggie. And then at Rudy Title, they give them a bottle of wine or a candle. That is the closing gift um, as far as the swag goes. It's, it's meant to, I used to have a signature closing gift. I had a mirror that I got at West Elm. It was 49 bucks. It was always fun when I'd go to sell houses after I worked with buyers and they would still have that mirror hanging up. It was very neutral, but it kind of became my signature thing. That was earlier in my career. I, I did that. But any other ideas or thoughts regarding closing gifts or questions about my closing menu? Um, I done a couple of fun things with um, Shutterfly or, uh, you know, Walgreens photo or something, you know, when we're, for example, um, in one hilarious transaction, um, we were back at the house looking at something and I took a picture of their four-year-old kid um, doing something outside the house and, um, and then another picture and had those turned into key chains. Because I learned early on after one good mistake, don't have keys made because they're going to change the locks anyway. Um, so instead of custom keys, I did custom key chain and that became part of, that's become part of my um, uh, key presentation. Love it. Other ideas? Anybody, something you've seen, heard, or wanted to try or do? I would encourage to, also potentially make it something, don't put your logo on something they're not gonna, I, I, I'm not gonna give somebody wine glasses with my logo on it. I mean, give me a break people. So, and if you're not sure, you got 300 other agents to run some things by. 
you've got friends or people to put things on. There's Facebook groups, um, Lab Coat Agents. Just go to Lab Coat Agents and put search closing gifts. It's endless. So the menu of services, this was not like in my first five years of business. This came down the road as I had some, uh, some partnerships and other things. All right, the closing table. So the closing table, I think, is uh, a really interesting uh, dynamic that's happening there. One, you're going to want to prepare them that this is not very climactic, okay? All of this work culminates to them getting a dirty key and, um, or a five-minute signing as a seller and no check. And it's like, that, that's it? Yeah, probably the third biggest decision you'll do or process you'll do in your life, and that was it. I've had agents that make videos and put balloons and turn it into a party. I don't have time for that. And I think for some, it could be considered a little hokey. But it also becomes that person's signature. So I would say, I mean, it's a chance to give thanks and be of service. So to me, like, what's my role there? My role is to be a great cheerleader and resource. So when my clients come in at Rudy, they're gonna ask them for their ID and or coffee or water. I, if I come in late, as typical agents would, I'd say, hey, did they get your ID or coffee yet? Not yet, cool, hey, they're gonna need your ID. So I jump in as an assistant to the person at the front desk um, and say, hey, they're gonna need your ID. Can I get you some water or soda or coffee? Again, it's just my chance to be a host because that's my domain as much as it is their domain, Rudy titles, okay? And so I'll go get him water or coffee and Rudy appreciates and knows that I know what we're doing. I said, do we have a room yet? No, we're gonna, put, okay, cool. They're, so I'm just trying to help, right? So yeah, we're gonna, you're gonna be in the last room on the right. Cool, let's, you mind if we go back? Great, so I'm, I'm taking control of the situation, okay? You don't wanna look any more confused or unsure of what's happening, even though you might have issues like the documents aren't even ready yet. You're just trying to get people settled and calm and in a good space. So I get us in a room. Um, are you exhausted? Did you hate packing as much as I do? I mean, I just make some conversation about, about what's going on and try to uh, acknowledge all the work they've done to get here. Um, if I had to negotiate, let's say at that final, final walk, I saw the hole in the carpet. On my way to the title company to sign documents, I call the listing agent and I say, we have a problem. And I call the title company and I say, we're gonna need an escrow agreement. And or we're gonna need to add some money for repairs or something. Get that process started on the drive over. If that's in fact the first time you saw that. It happened to me at a condo. I walked in for final, final walk and three of the blinds were all torqued. Well, the home inspector I then find out doesn't check the blinds. That's a problem that's now been fixed. And, um, but a lot of inspectors don't because they, when they pull on them, they tend to can sometimes rip down and now they've got a new problem. And the inspector doesn't want to mess with that. So we're not doing it when we looked at the house the first time. So nobody's checking these darn blinds. So the seller, you know, I had to negotiate an amount that the seller would give to the buyer for those, for those blinds. Um, the other thing is there to be a resource. Bring a copy of the Alta or the closing disclosure that you have. Make sure there's matches yours. It again, looks like I don't bring a lot into the closing table. I'll typically have that piece of paper. I'll have my phone and I'll have my closing bag. And if I haven't written my note card yet, I'm writing it there while they're signing. Yeah, it's Bush League, but it happens. And so you better have one in your bag. It's better to have one and write it there than not at all, right? and you probably ate lunch like from a gas station on the way there and you're on fumes and your kids like getting called out for something, you know? It's the life of realtor. All right, so that's, my, that's part of my job is to make sure that they have questions. Um, I'm understanding the Alta, explaining to them, I'll add value like, hey, just so you know, we did make sure we got the 20% discount on your title insurance as a seller, right? Or, Hey, just want you to see there's where the, um, the credit to the, to the buyer for the closing costs, but recognize you didn't really pay their closing costs. It's just money off the price just set in a different way. Okay. It's, it's that time to affirm them and make them feel comfortable. Um, 
typically they'll start signing and my job is to kind of shut up, tell jokes and look cute and refill coffee. Uh, I try not to sit there on my phone and act like I'm doing other things, but if I am, I tell them I'm on the phone coordinating with the listing agent, just letting them know we're here to try to tell them like what I'm doing so that they don't just think like I'm not present or um, I'm working on other things as you probably are. Uh, after the closing, then they'll typically make copies. The last one, if they want, you know, digital hard copies and they'll get their wine for them. And then that's the time that I typically, they present my little gift. I say, just here's a little something for me. Um, you know, if you don't love it, re-gift it or donate it. And, um, and I just really appreciate uh, you working with, with me and your loyalty. You are a champion of my business and um, or you're a key part of my business that helps make it work. I'm a referral only realtor. And so, you know, part of the way that I can grow and continue is if you hear of any buying or selling or investing, I would love to help them. I promise I'm not going to bug them, but if you do hear of that, if you wouldn't mind, share their information with me and you can share my information with them. But what I find is some people are really, really busy and they end up losing my contact. So it's always best if you share their information for with me, I'll follow up with them and see if I can be a resource or answer any questions. How's that sound? Does that work for you? Sounds great, Ted. You know, it's been awesome. Um, I also like at the... Um, at the closing table to write a note and drop it in the mailbox at the title company. So you've given them one at closing, write a, write a follow-up just saying, you know, I'm sure you're still covered in boxes, but no, I'm still here. And you drop that note at the, just tell them to put it in the outgoing mail. They're going to have new mail at their new address within two to three days. And you're going to look like a champ. How many times have I done that? The idea came up today and I think it's great. Use it. I also give them in my closing packet, packet one of these little handy dandy things and I put five business cards in there. And I say, here's your, here's your permission to share me. So you don't have to do this stuff. I do it maybe, you know, I used to do some things 100% of the time. Now I just do my best to try to do it as much as possible. But the more you get in a system routine with it, pick the five things you're going to do and just do those well. All right. And then the follow up. So I think the follow up is really, really important. And it's an area that I struggle because my database is still something I'm going to fight with. But a good database will put a reminder when you change their category to past client and it'll automatically put all these reminders in there. You should call the day after because if something's wrong, it's typically going to happen sooner than later. Just call to see you're settled. Leave them a voicemail. There's this thing on these phones called voicemail and you'll hear it. There's a beep after you talk, call somebody and it's this thing called voicemail and you can talk to it and then it's like recorded. They can listen to it later. And it's this novel thing we gave up about two years ago, but there's leave a voicemail. <laughs> Do not send a text. You can send a text too saying, Check your voicemail. It's this new thing. You're going to delete it and hate it. Leave a voicemail if you don't reach them and just tell them you're here. What could I help with? Are there any resources or things you notice that you need? One week, two weeks, one month. The conversation is very similar at one week. At two weeks, are you unpacked? What resources can I help with? Have resources they may want. I've got a professional home organizer. Would it be helpful? Could I, would you like me to share her info or have her reach out to you? That's how you're a great referral source. May I have them reach out to you? Now, a lot of people will say no, but for busy people, they'll take it because they know they are in the weeds and they'll love that call when it comes in. Oh God, I'm so glad you called. I forgot to call you. All right, one month. Do you need lawn care service? I have my people three months, six months, one year, and then recurring. Thereafter, um, you know, if they're in your top 25 referral sources, meaning they're one of your, your channel accounts, your hot people, they should get a call from you at least once a month in addition to a monthly message, in my opinion. And then I call them every year on their anniversary and send them a home anniversary card because I think it's funny and they like it. And you can tell them how much their home made. You can send them a CMA. 
Wow, it's 11.24. How do we do? We got time for Google, uh, Google templates. Any other questions, comments, feedback? How about a takeaway? Give me a takeaway, at least one takeaway that today that what you felt was helpful. Uh, referral at the end of asking for business at the end of plays. That should be like the best, easiest time to work that in. It is, but I will tell you, it is the second best time to do it. The okay. best time to do it, it, ask for referrals, is while you're in the trenches. They do not remember your name about 24 hours after they leave that closing table because they got new problems and they need I new also people. Love asking for photos from the sellers. Yes. Hey. <laughs> we'll yeah. do that from now on. And yeah. in addition to receipts. Yeah, but you know, the receipt's good, but I don't know that it was done. And again, the photos, the best is the inspector, but that doesn't happen that often. So excellent. Yes, Janet. Yeah, there's, a, there's, the, there's books written about, you know, you're, if you just start to look for a new car and you're looking for, I don't know, a Pathfinder. You're gonna start noticing Pathfinders everywhere. Well, guess what? When people start hunting for homes, guess who they hear, what they hear about all the time? Anytime they hear the word home, somebody in the office is talking about home, somebody on the phone is talking about home. So they're very attuned to hearing home and realtor and who's helping them do this. So the time is really at the very beginning to remind them and during. There's a program called Buy Referral Only and it's talking going green. And that is the best time to get referrals is during the transaction and that you're at least getting two referrals out of everybody that you're actively working with. Second best time is at closing. Third is after closing. Yeah, but you should be asking at closing. Yes, remind them like how you build your business. Other takeaways. Quick plug for C2EX and the Tech Lab next Thursday. C2EX has an excellent and super easy um, option for asking for, um, uh, you know, uh, not just, um, what do you call them? Testimonials. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me about that. Yes, the day after the one week. The one week, I think, is a good time for testimonials as well. And you should be getting them. Other takeaways. Love the list once again. Thank you. The list? All, all the lists that you gave oh, us. You're welcome. You're welcome. What else? I'm excited to take away Gmail templates. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to Gmail templates. Other takeaways? I like your closing gift menu instead of having to, you know, do something personalized or not personalized, giving them kind of the option to pick some things takes the pressure off and lets them choose. I like that. Excellent. Also with gift cards, if you're giving gift cards, only use vendors where you're charged upon redemption. My massage therapist, my uh, car detail people, I'm only charged when they're redeemed, which is about 20% of the time. Other takeaways, we do this for a reason. Not just wasting your time. Everybody gets to share, so find your unmute button. <laughs> I got all day, everybody. We can wait as long as you want. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you, Dee. Okay, you did remind me that I've need to schedule the walkthrough for my new construction people we have to uh, find out when the draw drywall is going up i love it yes i need to do that i forgot it's coming so, okay good i'm glad that was helpful yes and it is you're right it's better to do it before the drywall is up and they won't always remind you that's right never like <laughs> so thanks all right, we're going to go into Gmail templates. Here it is. This is going to change your life, friends. Oh, the pressure. The pressure. 
Now, this is just going to be the snippet for the more in depth. There'll be another, there'll be more in depth. Rebecca's just going to show you how she created one. Take it away, Ms. Cooper. Um, so I'm going to click the share screen here. Yes, ma'am. See if that works. Um, and hope I didn't restrict the access for share screen. Seller. I want to share the whole thing. Select yeah, the it window. It doesn't work. It's just going to share that window. That sucks. I know. I got to figure okay. out what that's about. Okay. All right. Well, we'll start. What do you see? <laughs> see your Gmail. You, you see, and you see just my Gmail. We see just your Gmail. Okay. So you don't see a Word document that's open. Okay. No, right. but we'll, we'll understand that how to copy and paste text. Okay. Sure. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right, so I'll try to make this quick. And um, the first thing that you want to do is make sure you have templates enabled. And so you go to your settings and see all settings and go to advanced, scroll down and see templates. Turn frequent messages into templates to save time. Templates can be created, blah, blah, blah. All right. Um, so there are a couple of different ways you can create templates, but you can read that later. Make sure you've got enabled click there. Okay. Now let's pretend for the sake of argument, I don't have any templates yet. I do have a template, but um, let's go on and make one. And then I'll show you how to, how to then use one. Okay. So you go to compose. Now, as, a word, as luck would have it, I just created a new template because I had just written the email for the third time. So, um, and you'll see in, in Teddy's templates, you know, there's a, um, there are little codes, like LA is listing agent, and then the number, you know, so the first one you'll send to the listing agent is LA1, LA2, LA3. And that's how you're going to be able to find them when you're, when you have, 45 templates, all right? So this one's going to the seller title company uh, when you've executed a new amendment that you have to get to them. All right, so um, what I'm gonna do, everybody see that I, I pasted this in yeah. here. The red stuff, you're gonna delete later, but we wanna have it in there for now. It doesn't always paste perfectly from uh, Word into Gmail, so just, Give it a quick eyeball. And pro tip, if you have an auto signature, delete it from the when you're creating the template. Otherwise, it saves your auto signature in the template and then it adds your signature when you create a new one, all right? Only took me a couple of months to figure that one out, why I kept getting two signature blocks. All right, then you go down to the three dots down here, the more options, click there templates all right now oh, i have look at all the templates friends so, so i need to scroll to the bottom of the templates save draft as template oh but wait you got to go all the way over here too i don't want to overwrite anything that i i've already done you can do that when you need to update them i need to go all the way to the bottom and save as a new template all right I like that name because that's what's going to show in my template list. So I know seller title two is the one I'm looking for. But if I can't remember what that is, I got a little, little description here and hit save. All right. Now let's just delete that and pretend like now let's fast forward and I need to send that email to Rudy title. I go to compose, go back down to the little uh, options down here, clicky click. Go to templates. Now I got to scroll through and see what did, which one do I need? Oh, I need seller title two. I've got a new amendment. All right. And it plops it in there. And that's the gist of it. Now, this is just a best practice that I've come up with is I want in my template, this red stuff here um, that tells me when I'm going to send it, who I'm going to send and, and who gets it. You know, this is seller title company and then the seller's agent, if you're on a team, you know, you want to make sure you send the seller name. Subject line, then I take this, I plop it here and I remind myself to, 
I like to have the address in every subject line so that when I'm eyeballing, it's easy for me to tell. Because if you're working with the transaction coordinator and everything says McKenzie on it, then you're like, which, which one is it? Or you are the transaction coordinator and you go to search for that property in your email, you can find that quickly. Yeah. And then lastly, the attachments, that's reminding me, hey, doofus, don't forget to attach <laughs> what, what needs to be, you know, in here. And so let's say I attach it. I'll just pick something. Uh, I'm just there. I, pick, I just pick something random. All right. It's uploaded it. Not that it matters. And then before I send it, delete the red stuff because they don't need to see all that. And then you can send it to, I'm going to send it to my good friend, Becca.Cooper. And there you go. Now, there's your, there's your uh, template. What? I'm going to let everybody take that in. It's a lot. It was, it's, it's, it's life changing. Um, and it really is. And those are great pro tips. One thing on there, also be mindful if you're using specific language like good afternoon, I'm not going to remember to change that. So I just might say, hello, friend, or good day, or something like that. So that if you forget to change good afternoon, um, you know, but that red stuff there, you'll see from my templates, that is a system I came up with long, long, long ago um, when I had, was doing it myself and working with an admin that, uh, how about changing in a template? Once we have one, you do the, can you show us how to change an existing template? Sure, easy enough. So um, let's say that, uh, you know, and I keep, all, I keep all my templates in a Word document just because they're easier to edit in Microsoft Word. Um, but then sometimes I, I'm like, you know, I really need to, I'm not, like, this one isn't as effective as I need to need it to be. So I'll go to my Word document, which you can't see right now. I'll make my changes that I want there. And then I'll go to compose and I'll do my now new updated one, just like I'm creating a new template, but <clears throat> It's going to be, it's going to have, the, it, it must have the same name in order to overwrite the existing one. If you change the name, then you're going to have to go and delete the other one. So let's, yeah. change, let's change good afternoon to hello. How about that? All right. There you go. We like that. All right. All right. So again, it needs to. That's why I like having this red stuff. I'm like, what did I name that thing? Oh, it doesn't matter. I just copy and paste it. All right. So now I've made my changes, you know, whatever. Okay. Make changes. Then you go down here to temp, uh, your options, templates, and then go down to save draft as template. Don't click on this. If you click on this, it's going to paste your old template and then you're going to have both of them in there and you're like, oh crap, which one was I trying to change? Go to save draft as template and then land on top of the one that you're trying to change. All right. The one that you want to swap out. Does that make sense? Yep. Click that. Overwrite save template. Are you sure? Why? Yes, I am. And now that's my, that's my template. Great. So that's love, the it, quick, love it, love it. That's the quick and dirty. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or give me a call or what's up, and um, I'll try to get something together Ed, for Gmail tips. All right, put your hands up if that is going to help your business. I love it. Maria, I know your hands are up. Virginia, you look great. The rest of you, it's just fine that you're not on video. We appreciate you're here so, so much. Truly, truly, truly. And those that are, uh, are live, we love that too. Questions, comments before we wrap? This has been great. 11.38, a little over time is typical, Teddy. All right. I love it, love it. Thank yeah, you. Please. Thank you for your time. Thank you for Thank all you your time. Good. So welcome. Appreciate you all. Have a great day. Don't ever get caught without your keys at closing. Bye.